Hey guys, in this video we are going to talk about some vector kinematics in two directions. So, we've got a question and it says a ball is thrown with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second making a 40 degree angle with respect to the ground. Using just that information we can find out the time of flight, which is how long the ball goes between being thrown and hitting the ground, the maximum height, and the range, which is really displacement in the left and right direction. How far away from you did the ball land? So I'll draw you a little picture, I guess, and then I'll explain some things. So we can think of the path the ball is making is kind of like an arch shape like that. So its maximum height is going to be up here. Let's say there's you over here and you're throwing it. We need to think about sort of what's happening when we get up close. We're making sort of like a straight line with respect to the ground, a slanted line that looks kind of like this. That's our initial velocity vector. It's made up of an x component and a y component. The y component we're going to call v original or v naught y and the x component we're going to call v original or v naught x. And when you add those two vectors together, the result is your original vector or your initial vector and it was equal to 20 meters per second. And it was making a 40 degree angle with the ground. So that's all the information you need actually to be able to solve for time of flight. You need the y component of the initial vector for maximum height. You need the y component of the initial vector and the time, which you find in time of flight. And for the range, you need the x component of the initial velocity vector and the time, the same time that you found for time of flight. So the first thing we're going to do is find the y component of the initial velocity vector. So hopefully you can see that these kind of form a right angle triangle. The right angle will be right here, which makes this side the hypotenuse. With respect to the 40 degree angle, this would be the opposite side and this would be adjacent. So for VOY, we're using opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine. So sine of 40 degrees is going to equal opposite VOY over hypotenuse, which is 20. Sine of 40 is about equal to 0 0.64. So multiply that by 20, and I get that VOY is about equal to 12.9. I'll do the same thing for VOX. I will, instead of using sine, I'll use cosine, because this is the adjacent and hypotenuse signs I'm using. So cosine of 40 is equal to adjacent. VOX over hypotenuse, which is 20. So I'll go cos 40. I get that's equal to 0 0.766. Multiply by 20, and I get VOX equals 15.3. So we can use that information to solve for time of flight. I would use the formula for time of flight. Vs, the final velocity, is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Now let's think about the acceleration for a minute. Acceleration in this case is coming from gravity, which is sort of in the up and down direction. So the final velocity we're going to use needs to come from the y direction. The initial velocity we use needs to come from the y direction. Time doesn't have a direction associated with it, so that's why we're able to use it for things in the, both the x and y direction. So when the ball is at the end of its journey, is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it, when it hits the ground over here, it comes to a stop. So the final velocity is going to be zero. The initial velocity in the y direction, we said was 12.9, plus the acceleration, it's gravity, negative 9.8, and the time, we don't know. 
the first thing I'll do is subtract 12.9 from both sides. So I'll get negative 12.9 over here. 12.9 minus 12.9 is equal to 0. So 0 plus negative 9.8 times time. To solve for time, you'll just divide both sides by negative 9.8. 12.9 divided by 9.8, I get is equal to 1.32. And it's positive 1.32 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So time equals 1.32, 1.32. Now that we've got time, we can solve for maximum height and range. So we'll do maximum height first. So our maximum height up here, we're going to use the formula d equals v naught t plus 1 over 2 a t squared. So for the maximum height, the displacement is in the up and down direction. So I'm just going to say that this is equal to d in the y direction, which means we use the initial y and do I need to tell you anything else? I don't think so. Um, we've solved for time already. Okay, so dy, well it's the initial v o y was equal to 12.9 times time was 1.32 equals 1 over 2 acceleration from gravity times the time that we found squared. All you need to do is simplify that. 12.9 times 1.32, I guess that's equal to about 17. 1 half times 9.8, don't forget your negative sign, times 1.32 squared, I get that's equal to about negative 8.5. And 17 plus negative 8.5 is the same as 17 minus 8.5, and I get that it's equal to 8.5. So it's traveled 8.5 meters to get to its maximum height right here. Now let's find how many meters it travels until it hits the ground. So let's think about when it's moving left and right, that movement is not really dictated by the pull of gravity. It's the up and down movement that's affected by gravity. So we don't really need to use a formula that uses acceleration anymore when we're just finding the range. So we can use good old v equals d over t. This time remember v is in the x direction and the displacement is in the x direction too. So how far can it travel horizontally in 1.32 seconds. Well, we know its velocity in the x direction was 15.3 meters per second, and the time was 1.32. So all you need to do is say 15.3 times 1.32 equals dx. 15.3 times 1.32, and I get that dx is equal to 20.196, so I'll just say 20 meters, and I can put it in my chart up here.